Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Understanding Free CAD series. Today we're going to be looking at the draft tool in the part design. Now a draft means to add an angle or a slant to a face or multiple faces so we can build and shape our object. We're going to be using the draft tool in the part design and we're also going to understand the technique that we can use in the draft workbench to draft awkward objects that will fail the draft in the part design. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. Before we go any further, we're going to understand how the draft works in the part design. So create a new document. I'm in FreeCAD and I'm going to create a body and a sketch. And remember, there's multiple ways of doing this. We can come to the task, create body and create sketch or we could use the toolbar. I'm going to start on the XY plane and hit OK. Just going to center my view and zoom out slightly and create a rectangle from the sketcher. I'm not going to bother about constraints because we're just demonstrating this for the time being. And hit close. Just going to zoom out a bit and center this. We can use the center view because we've got that selected. And I can hit pad or use the pad from the toolbar. Set this to something like 60 mil. And basically we've got a cube. So this is what we're going to start with. Now what drafting allows us to do is take one of the faces of the cube and draft it at an angle to create basically a triangular shape. So we're drafting these angles. To do that, we've got the pad here, which we're gonna be working with, but we need to select a face and we're gonna use this tool here. Make a draft on a face. Also available from part design, and though it's red and it's a subtractive feature, it's actually apply a dress up. And we've got Philip Chamfer's Drafts and Fitness. So I hit draft, you'll notice that there's a slight change because of this angle. We've selected the face and we started to draft an angle. So you can see if I move this up, that face has been increased by 22.5 degrees from this point. Now we can move this outwards. If we want to reverse it, we just reverse the pull direction and it moves it the other way. The trouble is, is that I'm drafting this the wrong way. I actually want this to draft downwards from this edge. So what do we do? Well, we use something called a neutral plane and that means the actual plane will be fixed. So it's dimensionally stable. So it won't change in dimension. If I click neutral plane, our cube returns to its original form and we can select the top face. The draft will still be applied to face four, as you can see on the left. May I select that top face? We can see that the angle has changed and our top has been kept static. So now we've drafted this face. You can see how that's drafted. Again, using the reverse direction, we draft it the other way. So we can create a slope on our object. Now we can add multiple faces because we've made this face dimensionally stable or static. It's the neutral plane. So our neutral plane is here going across here. We can add, say, another face. Now if I click add, you'll see that the face that we selected before is colored in purple. All the others are gray, so we can add the next face. You would have to tweak the draft angle, so just set it up and set it back to where it was before. You can now see we've drafted this face and this face. And to remove faces, just click remove. Faces, you can see are highlighted in purple, the ones that have been used, and we remove that face. I'm gonna come around to the back and add this face in and we'll just tweak that angle and you can see how the drafting has taken effect on both these faces 
Trouble is, say if I wanted to draft this face as well, but this one is the neutral plane. If I remove that, and say let's click on it and just delete that from there, and just click neutral plane again so it's not grayed. When it's grayed, that means you're selecting a neutral plane, like so. When it's removed and click, then we're back to normal. You can see we've got no neutral plane reference specified. So if I added that face, that would actually fail. No neutral plane reference specified, four, two, and six. Those can't be drafted. Let's remove that face and add back in the neutral plane. So how do we get around that? Well, we can just hit OK and create another draft. So I want to draft this face. Come up, create a draft on that face. Neutral plane, I want this one to keep neutral. And we can start drafting that plane. And that's drafting outwards like that. So you can see we can start to build up some interesting shapes with this to fit our applications. We can't draft faces that have a chamfer or fillet that are a tangent to each other. So let's get rid of that draft. Go back to the original pad. If I created a chamfer on here or a fillet, let's go for a fillet and just create this curve. If I hit OK, I can click on this face and draft this face using the draft. So that's a neutral plane. Select this one. So we've got no errors. And we can start drafting that face, moving that outwards, no problems whatsoever. But cancel that. Let's select this face and create the draft. and start moving that. You can see we've got this face moving. I've selected face six, this face is moving. But I want this face to move. So let's select the neutral plane as the top. You can see adding face failed, face six omitted. So we can't actually draft that face because we're trying to keep this face stationary and draft this one out, which we'll try to draft through the chamfers. This face is tangent to this chamfer, so we can't actually do that. We can do it if we're using this face and making this one neutral because it's normal to that face. So if we take this face, this one's normal to here, then that's not a problem. But when you've got something like a chamfer or fillet involved, then you start getting into issues. So the best way to do that is, as usual, add your chamfers and fillets last. So we take away that fillet, create our draft. So click on the face you want to draft, create the draft, neutral plane, select the top, and we start drafting and bring this out. Hit OK. Now we add the fillet to this line by using the fillet. Also remember it's on part design, apply dress up and our draft and fillet is on the dress up. So fillet there and we create our fillet and hit okay. So we've drafted that angle and we soften that angle with a fillet. When we have a more complex object like this additive loft, then we will have trouble actually drafting this. So click on one side and click on the draft, part design, apply dress up and draft. See how face three has been added. If I hit okay, the draft will fail. Let's cancel that. The same if we try to come around to this side and draft this side. Draft is not possible. The object is too complex for the draft. So how do we get around that? Well, we need to make use of another workbench. What we need to do is take this sketch and angle this outwards. Now we can do that by coming in and selecting the sketch, looking at the attachment because it's attached to the support 
of the X Z plane and then changing the angle but making sure that we get the right axis to change this on so I change this to the X axis and change this as you can see it's starting to get quite awkward to figure out what axis we need to change especially if we wanted to draft this outwards and then say draft this angle inwards so we're coming inwards then we're going to have to start taking percentages of angles and axes to actually do this how do we get around this well we can use the draft workbench and i'm just going to reset that angle on here to zero but we first have to detach the sketches that we want to use from their supports. The reason being, if I try to change this angle over in the draft workbench, and I'm going to select this sketch, use the rotate, select a point, and start changing this then we come into an error. Sketch cannot be modified because its placement is read-only. The reason why the placement is read-only is because it's attached to that axis. Click on the sketch, you can see the attachment there. The sport is the XZ plane. Let's highlight all those sketches that make up the additive loft. Look at the support and remove those from there. So the XZ plane click on the three dots and hit clear and OK. Those are marked to be recomputed. Let's hit Ctrl R. Those are now recomputed. But you'll notice that the support has been removed. And the placement is now first before the attachment was first. So now we can affect the placement, which means the draft workbench can come into play. If you don't see the grid in, then we need to turn on the grid by using this waffle icon here. Normally this will be over here, like so, probably up on one of these toolbars. I've just made this a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So we need to expand this out and select the waffle icon. We also need to make sure that this snap to endpoint is on and the snap lock is also on. Normally all of these are selected, but just take them off by just clicking on them and just make sure these two are selected. Now we have to set our working plane. Click the face that we want to draft, come up to utilities, select plane. You'll notice on the top left this is set to custom. This means our grid has been placed on that face. Select the left so we can see that. Now, if we select the sketch that we want to move, come up to the rotate tool or modifications, rotate. Now, when we roll over these points, you can see that we get an icon by the side showing the snapping. So we get the white dot and the icon. So roll over, click and take your finger off the mouse button. We now get this line. Notice on the left hand side, the rotate, the base angle changes. We want that at zero. So come back and hover over that point and that'll snap to that point. The base angle now is zero. Click again and now we can start to change the sketch. You can see the white line, that's the sketch. Now, if we want to draft this to a certain angle, you can see on the left hand side as I move the mouse pointer up and down, the rotation is changing. We type in the rotation, so I want to draft it to say 345, and type in 345 and hit enter. This will move this around. We now got to do the same on the other side. Click the sketch on the other side, use the rotate. Same process, click, come out, come back, and click again. And now we can rotate this to wherever we see fit. Now, if you rotate the one side a certain amount, then you'll need to rotate the other side a certain amount as well. We can be more accurate 
what I'm going to do is just wind back. I'm going to use a rotate on this side. Hit rotate, hover over the point, click, come out, hover over again, click, and rotate. And I'm going to rotate, say, 10 degrees and hit enter. Now we've got our rotation done. We're now going to do the same on the other side. Click the other sketch, rotate, hover over the point, click, come back, click, and now we can rotate. So no 10 degrees is 350, but if we didn't want to do the maths, we can just type in 360, if you look to the left, minus 10. And that will set our angle. So now we've drafted out the back. And if we wanted to draft out the bottom, we can select the bottom, utilities, select plane, our gridding will move, click bottom, and we can do the same. Select the sketch, select this sketch at the top, use the rotate, hover over the point, click, come out, come back, click, and we can start moving that to where we see fit. We can put some angle on here to see where we're going. Or we may just want to show those sketches. So you can see how we've angled that side now. So that's two ways of doing drafting. One from the part design draft and also one from the draft workbench itself. Hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.